Good morning, East Hamilton School. School. This is Nick and Soraya for ETV on Wednesday, uh, Thursday, May 31st, 2018. Today's top story is National Smile Day. Smiling can lift a bad mood. Scientists have found that smiling on purpose can help people feel better. Just this simple act of putting a smile on your face can lead to feeling actual happiness, joy, or amusement. Smiling on purpose changes brain <laughs> chemistry. So, right now, we want everyone to smile. <coughs> Were you in a good mood or a bad mood? Now you are in a good mood, and this will set the mood for the rest of the day. Also, keep a lookout for the difference in tomorrow's broadcast. The 8th graders will be on their New York trip tomorrow, so try to guess who will be on air in the morning. Now we're here with the riddle of the day. Thanks, Nick. The riddle is, this is as light as a feather, yet no man can hold it for long. What is it? I will repeat it. This is as light as a feather, yet no man can hold it for long. What is it? Leave your answers in the comment section below. That's it for Riddle. Now back to the main desk. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Today in Cougar Cafe, they are serving um, chicken, cheesesteaks, peppers and onions, pasta salad, and fresh or chilled fruit. Now to Nick with today's weather. <coughs> we're good, we're good. Thanks, Trey. The high for today is 73, while the low will be down to 62 with 89% humidity and 6 mile per hour winds and 50% precipitation, with thunderstorms throughout the day. That's over weather and back to the main desk. Now here are today's school announcements. In box top news, please bring in your box tops by this Friday, June 1st, for the May contest. Uh, the class that sends in the most box tops will get the, will get to spray Miss <laughs> Stafford hair a different color. Today in the student council, uh, they will be selling their annual lip lollipops. Stop by Mrs. B's student room to purchase them for one fifty for one or three for three. Don't forget to keep voting for a school in the Terra Circle Playground contest. We've moved into third place, but let's move into second place. And remember, if we move into second place, Mr. Colt and the ATV crew will wear silly wigs all day here at school. So be sure to take out your Chromebooks right now and vote. Now to Kenzie in the Skybox with sports. Thanks, Nick. In the MLB, the Texas Rangers beat the Seattle Mariners 7-6, and the Los Angeles Dodgers beat the Philadelphia Phillies 2-8. In the NHL, the Washington Capitals beat the Vegas Golden Knights 3-2. That's it for sports. Now back to the main desk. Thanks, Kenzie. Now over to Maria with the answer to the riddle on the winning homeroom. Thanks, Soraya. The riddle was, this is light as a feather, yet no man can hold it for long. What is it? The answer was, your breath. And the winner is... Thank you. Oh, oh, the winner is Miss Bangler. Congratulations. Be sure to email Mr. Schuler with the joke, with the joke for tomorrow. That's it for riddle. Now back to the main desk. Now we have a special interview for you today. We are lucky enough to be joined in studio by Good Morning America's Chief Meteorologist, Ginger Z. Ginger Z also spoke to our third through sixth graders about her book, Chasing Helicity. Let's head over to Annika and Caitlin, who are with Ginger Z. Thanks, Nick. We are here with Ginger Z. Welcome to our EATV studio. We are honored to have you here. I am happy to be here. Thank you. We wanted to ask you some questions so our viewers can learn a little bit more about you. To mm -hmm. begin, how did you become interested in meteorology? 
So my passion for meteorology started really young. I was eight, and I saw thunderstorms coming across Lake Michigan. I spent a summer on Lake Michigan, and I saw water spouts. And so I actually saw these incredible, magical storms and fell in love with the atmosphere. I needed to know more about the atmosphere. So that's where the passion started. And then meteorologists can work in a lot of different places. You can work in a private you know, sector. You can work for airlines. You can work for shipping companies. Um, I really saw the movie Twister, and then I wanted to be a storm chaser. And so I went to a college that actually studied storm chasing and that's what I my intentions were to be a researcher in the field and then I did an internship in TV and it all started getting crazy. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay so how did you get started with your career and did you always want to become a meteorologist? Yes so from that point I knew I wanted to be a meteorologist very young I just didn't know what type and um, an internship is what changed my mind from wanting to be Helen Hunt in the movie Twister where I really fell in love with wanting to be a storm chaser mm -hmm. to not only wanting to do that but wanting to do that on television and so I've now worked on the show Storm Chasers on Discovery Channel I've storm chased ever since I was in college and I've kind of married the two ideas that internship was with a guy named James Spann in Alabama and that's where I learned that I liked communicating science as well. It wasn't just researching it, being out in the field, but I liked to then tell people about it. And that's how my career has evolved. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So what is it like working at Good Morning America? Is it something you've always wanted to do? Well, I'm tired. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> no, it is, it's, the, it's the top. I mean, when you work in news, this is the top of news. This is where I've always aspired to be, but I worked so hard to get to this place, and then you get there and you realize there's so much else out there yet to do. So it's really like I started over, and it's an evolution of, of who I've become, and now I see that this platform that is Good Morning America allows me to speak to many more people about the science that I adore. So what would you say is your favorite thing about predicting the weather? I still love the puzzle. I love that the atmosphere is a big puzzle and then I get to figure it out every day. Every time I see a cloud, I think of how high is that cloud, what is it associated with it, what low pressure, what high pressure, what is sinking air, where, where are we seeing thermals, where are we not. It is, that's all I think about. So I've always been a little bit weird that way and that's never going to end. <laughs> So you're also a writer, so mm -hmm. what, where did you get your idea to write the book, Chasing Helicity? So I went, when I had the baby, um, I've always had the, the idea of a character named Helicity. Helicity is um, when I study tornadoes, when I go in storm chase, there's um, something called zero to three kilometer helicity, and it's a variable in tornado science that shows you how much spin is in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So it happens to be my favorite. I always thought it would be a nice girl's name if I ever had a baby that was a girl, but I didn't. I had two boys, plus my husband said, you're such a nerd, we're not going to name our kid after a weather <laughs> term. But whatever, I got to name my, my book Chasing Helicity. So I went to a publisher, and since I was young, I've always been told, you're really good at science and math, you're not a good writer. Mm -hmm. And so I always thought, well, I still want to communicate science, maybe I can write a baby book, you know, like a hard mm -hmm. board book. And I'm sure I can do that. I went there, they said, why don't you just try writing for that middle grade age? And so I wrote a couple chapters, and they were like, we like it. I'm like, wait, me? You like what? I thought I wasn't a good writer. For 30 years, I've been told I wasn't a good writer, or told myself, I think, that I wasn't a good writer. So I started writing then, and then as we talked about the stories that were loosely based on my life, they said, you know what, your personal story, that's a book. And that actually became my first book, Natural Disaster, that came out last December. So what was it like to write a story, especially a chapter book? What was the most challenging part? I write too much. I go too far, too far. Um, I think that it's been an, it's been a good process for me to learn how to edit and how to write for a specific age group. That was really a big learning process. And they have um, kind of another writer that has wrote, written a lot of books for that that coaches me through and says, too far there, you want more here. Let's develop a character here. Let's, let's stay away from whatever you've done here. I also tend to get very dark, so they kind of have to, <laughs> <laughs> so we have to brighten it up a little bit sometimes. Yeah. Um, so we've heard this book is also a first in the trilogy, so yes. is there any way we can get an inside scoop on what's more to come? I can tell you that Helicity is going to spend the next part of her summer, because a big event happens at the end of this book that kind of she needs to kind of run away from. It's, it's terrible in her life and she wants to get a little space. Her friend Mia is down in Galveston Island, um, on Galveston Island for the summer and she's going to go spend time there. So you can imagine what other types of weather she may run into along the Gulf Coast. Um, that's a little tease. And then also um, there is going to be another love interest that adds uh, into her life. Yes, very that exciting. That sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Miss Z, for yeah. your time and answering our questions. We really appreciate it. Happy to be Again, here. Again, special thanks to Ginger Z for being here with us. Be sure to watch her on Good Morning America. And you can also pick up a copy of her book, Chasing Helicity, at the Clinton Bookshop. Now back to the main desk. Bye. Bye.
Thanks, Austin, and great job. And thank you to Ms. Ginger Z for stopping by and to Ms. De La Pena for making the assembly, book signing, and interview possible. Thanks to the on the scenes production cast. And our on the air production. Do the best, best you can today, today and have a terrific day. day.